Aloha brothers each have their own claim to fame. Keith is among Hawaii's Aloha Tigers, and Kirk, well, for a few months, he was the acting mayor of Honolulu. It's a beautiful morning, and Aloha Tiger Keith Caldwell has brought his brother Kirk along for a weekend of fishing. Keith is known for tagging and releasing dozens of Aluas. Kirk is known as having been Honolulu's interim mayor in 2010. But out here, politics are set aside, and Kirk is his brother's best student. How about over here, Keith? Look. No, because then it's, I want to run it out like this way, huh? What Keith is rigging is different from the usual slide bait setup. Keith, will this work like this? Is it tight? Yeah, look. Come check. And what do you think? Yeah, we'll try it right there. Okay. Okay, now to find a place to put the pole holder, preferably up in the front somewhere. This will do. We'll do one pole at, at first to see how it um, fits. Keith is using a piece of coral to anchor his line. He says it's a natural material that does the job just as well as a lead weight. Keith. I know what you do, you slide it down. You slide it down and it just floats right on the edge, top of the water. Yep. So you're pulling along until it gets hooked, till the rock, get, till the coral gets yeah, hooked Yeah, just in. trying to anchor the lead yeah. line right now, the coral. Did you cast it over that way by the white water because that's a good place? Yeah, I wanted one right on the edge of the white water because yeah. it looks real good. The bait's swimming right there and it's yeah. kind of foamy and then clear on the outside a little bit. Is it smooth bottom? Was there a lot of coral growing down there? I think it's kind of bouldery. Bouldery? But not big boulders here and there, huh? So Keith, what did you do? You put the line through the, the uh, clothespin? Yeah, through the eye of the clothespin. Yeah. The, the wire part. So it slides up and down. Oh, the clothespin will slide. Yeah. Who taught you this again? What was his name? Well, no, we worked it out together, Jeff Ingham. Jeff Hingham. Jeff Hingham. But he used to, um, we used to just slide it down on the line, but every time a fish would strike, you'd break your lead line. This way you keep using the same one over and over. With a slide line in place, the next step is to catch bait. Might be a little rough right there. I'm gonna go try over there. Finally, the bait we're waiting for. <laughs> cool pee pee. Good bait. That's how you've seen it in there, just like that, and the ulua will come right up? Oh, yeah. Doesn't always catch, I mean. So it keeps the fish right on the surface. Yep. That's how, when it bites, it Yeah, can, they'll it hit and hooked. they'll swim with the bait, and then yeah. the line pulls tight, and then they just take off and set the hook. Yeah. You catch sharks this way, but not as much. They tend to play with it, and if you hear the bell dinging and you come out, so then you'll see the sharks trying to get in. You can pull it back up before they get, hook it like up. Like big sharks? Sometimes like kind of big, white tips and gray reefs. I usually don't like to catch them because you end up having to cut the line by the leader. Up. Yeah. It didn't take long for the weather to change. What started off as a windy day turned into a wet and windy day. It was time to go elsewhere. We came down on Friday and it was pretty stormy and we stayed until Saturday afternoon and never got any better. Real stormy and um, windy and a lot of rain and it was pretty miserable last night or the night before sleeping. So we decided to change locations and came down to another spot where it's a lot calmer, the weather's a lot nicer, nice sunny day and we're hoping to get some good action. 
I mean, we got some really nice baits. We got a bunch of Awama and we'll see how our luck goes. Hopefully it's good. It's not a Papillo action is this morning. Yeah, small one, real small. Okay. the rest of the gang changed their fishing location and their fishing luck as well. Out here, the breezes are gentle and the water's calm. And more importantly, the fish are biting. All right. Nice one, Jeff. Do I give him slack, Jeff? Went around the coral. Oh, look at the nice one right there. Come and cast a bait. Sure, put the bait on. Go there? Yeah, he's still there. He's right there. Oh, yeah, he's there. He's right there. Oh. He's stuck on the rock. Yeah, I may have to go in the water and get your fish. Oh, that's in the fire. It's a water party. Yeah, you want to? Or I can go in. You guys want them? I'll cook them. No, it's a Moana collie. He's got the little whiskers, like a Moana. They usually hang with the papillos. For Keith, this is just another fishing trip. But for his brother Kirk, a former Honolulu mayor, it's a greatly appreciated break from a very busy schedule. You know, it's been a really wonderful couple of days here on the Big Island. And in particular, Milo Lee, it makes me feel very much at peace. It reminds me of my, my younger years when I was a teenager and spent a lot of time along the south coast of the Big Island fishing and camping. And there's a real spirit about this place and particularly places like Mililii, I think in Ho'okena, Naapopo, are places that have a heaviness in the air. You can almost feel the, the air around you and the ocean and it's so calm water. Of course it brings back great memories of catching fish from little kid days in the tide pool to you know, becoming a teenager and fishing for Papio. And, you know, as we became adults, uh, my brother became a very good Alua fisherman and, you know, I'd go along with him. And, you know, it was great going this weekend and trying to see if we could catch Alua. Uh, it was just a special time. And this, the Big Island is a special place for me. I can see it. Is that another Moana? Okay, wait, Kirk, hold it in the water right there. Oh, Papio's following it. See the, it's following it along. Oh, another Moana calling. That's Keep him? Name. Yeah. Time slows down when you're fishing. Time slows down when you're camping. 
gives you a chance to reflect, gives you a chance to get grounded again. Spend time with my brother, you know, and not rushing, taking whatever amount of time it takes to catch or not catch. Oh, running. All right. What do you think it is? Puppy, oh, I can see it right there. There's another one following it. Another one following when we were little it. tiny kids, we'd use bamboo pole, and we'd catch moana, we'd catch hinalea and that kind of stuff. As we got older, we learned about catching awama and, you know, and live bait and could get papio. And then as adults, we started going for alua and stuff. So it's, it's just been a progression. But the one thing that stays constant is the connection to the aina. The connection not only to the aina, but also to the sea. Yeah, that's nice. A lot of moana collies. What do you think this is? How many pounds? I don't know. Maybe like three pounds or something. Nice colors. I know, they're beautiful. You want me to hold your pole? No, no, I got them. I'm just tiring them out. It's all part of the fight. That's what I like. I could lose them right now. It doesn't matter. Yeah. As long as you get the, the fight. Oh, that's a nice size. That is a nice size. Keith Caldwell is well known among many local anglers for being among the most avid Papio and Alua taggers. 18 and a quarter. 18 and a quarter. The data that he and other taggers help collect have given researchers much insight into this unique fishery. Oh, that was a nice one. Bunch more like that would be good. And shortly after that, Tracy gets a strike. Put a bait over by hers. Is there another one there? It's a nice one, Milu, though. Oh, another blue one. Oh, he's out there. Oh, he's going. No, he's right down there. He's still by you. That's a nice one. Beautiful fish. The tag stuff's right behind you. The act of fishing is basically you're, you're catching food. <laughs> and, and that tells you really where you come from. Eggs. Really? Those you know, we're so removed. You go to the supermarket, your food's all there. This is about catching fresh food, having fun doing it, and then eating a great meal out of your hard work. That's basic. Despite his busy schedule, Kirk is looking forward to doing that again. In fact, he's looking forward to it because of his busy schedule. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you'd like to share a fishing adventure, please get in touch with us at HawaiiGoesFishing.com and get updates on the latest at Facebook and Twitter. Aloha and ahui ho. Production support provided by Alamo Hawaii, the official rental car of the Hawaiian Vacation. Island Air, intra-island air transportation to all your favorite fishing grounds. Scuba equipment servicing provided by The Kind Scuba Repair, the most sophisticated repair facility in the Pacific Rim. Real Recipes was filmed at the Island Home Building Materials Showroom. Aloha Wear provided by Go Barefoot. Additional clothing provided by Hawaiian Island Creations.